China's manufacturing activity rose to a surprising two-month high in September, but property woes are a growing headache, and especially for our iron ore producers. House prices and sales across China are going backwards, and that's hitting steelmakers and miners. Today, the price of iron ore tumbled to a new five-year low, below 80 US dollars a tonne. Neil Woolridge reports. The ripple effects from China's housing slowdown are being felt from its bustling cities all the way to the red dirt of the Pilbara. The portions of the economy which are most important to Australia, I'm thinking particularly here about the construction sector, uh, conditions there are very weak. New home prices dropped in 68 out of 70 Chinese cities last month, including Beijing and Shanghai. That's more bad news for Australian iron ore producers because 24% of China's steel goes into the property market. It will be a protracted correction for house prices. Uh, we have considerable supplies on the market and we have relatively modest demand meeting it on the other side of the ledger. But after a month-long rout, there was finally some better news for Australian mining stocks. HSBC's Purchasing Managers Index for China rose more than expected in August, although that comes with a caveat. This survey has been quite a poor predictor of the soft patch which the Chinese economy has found itself in over the last couple of months, and other surveys, other surveys have been doing considerably better. Whatever the true story in China, it's clear the boom times aren't returning soon for Australian mining companies. The iron ore price fell again to a fresh five-year low overnight at just under 80 US dollars a tonne. That's helped push the Australian Materials Index down nearly 10% since August, and it's the pure iron ore plays which have been hardest hit. BC Iron has lost two-thirds of its value this year, while Atlas Iron has fallen a similar amount over 18 months, and they may still have some way to go before they hit rock bottom. We're sort of looking at steel consumption and demand going forward of around 3 to 4%. Uh, the supply of iron ore at the moment is running closer globally around 6%, so almost double that. Hence, you've got these very weak prices. On Monday, China's finance minister hosed down market hopes that its government would introduce more economic stimulus, despite concerns about the housing market and economic growth. But at a mining conference in Melbourne, delegates were assured that while demand from China is slowing, it won't fall in a hole. That doesn't mean the growth rate will come to negative. Only some of the commodity growth rate will come to negative. Uh, that's highly correlated to the construction area. But there are some other commodities that will benefit. The bigger concern for Australian iron ore miners, though, is oversupply. The deputy head of the China Iron and Steel Association is now conceding that some high-cost iron ore producers in China may have to close. Even we input more iron ore from overseas, there will be, of course, least production of local mine, iron mines. So that means some high cost iron mines will be closed in, in, China, in mainland China. But even if that happens, ANZ is forecasting the iron ore price will stay below 100 US dollars a tonne for the next two or three years.